jump. Do we have VP uh, Rubio here to take um, attendance? All right. Um, well, I can do that in the background. Okay. Thank you, guys. Rome. Um, so let's just keep it moving. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And I do not believe we have any minutes uh, from last week at all. Um, so unless if anybody else knows differently, so that was a party foul. Um, so let's just move it on. Um, and let's go to corrections and approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, I also don't know if that was got sent out to the Senate either. Um, let me pop those in the chat so that everyone can take a look. Then we can make a motion, pass them. There's the link. And yeah, whenever anyone wants to make a motion, I'll entertain it. Uh, Thank Senator you, Fisher. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on uh, uh, last week's agenda. I noticed it um, didn't start with the right date header. So that's just a note that I'm making out there. Um, yep. Normally uh, that's caught in the generation of the minutes, but I'm I'm looking at that now as I'm putting together my binder. Yep. The, um, thank you for the note. And uh, yeah, would have most likely have been uh, caught, uh, but uh, Senator Jones was out. Um, so yeah, that didn't happen. Um, uh, VP Saeed. Um, can you hear me? I can. OK, um, I would like to make a motion to move uh, new business right after public comments because uh, I have to represent student Senate at the virtual affairs. So. Um, OK, yeah. okay. Um, a motion to we'll make. All right, second by Senator Fisher. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please use the hand raising feature now. All right, and you can put them down. And all those opposed, you can put them up. And down, and any abstentions, you can put those up now. And down, and I believe that passed. So new business is going to be right after public comments now. Um, so now we can still have to uh, make a motion to approve the agenda. Um, VP Moreno, is that a, a motion to do such that? VP Moreno, can you can you hear me? Hmm. She's nodding, giving you a thumbs up, so. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, then do we have a second? I'll second. All right, seconded by VP Boyd. All those in favor, please use the hand raising feature now. All right, and you can put them down. And all those opposed, please put them up now. And down. And any abstentions, put them up. And down. And the agenda has passed for tonight. Awesome, awesome. All right, moving down the list. Now, public comments. Uh, we're very lucky to have 
Lucia Nunez here uh, to talk with us. Lucia? Good afternoon, everybody, or early good evening. Um, thank you very much for having me. I'll be quick with your time. Um, I just, uh, first of all, let me thank um, Senator Willis for doing the introduction last night at Professor Ibram Kendi's Madison College Talks. We were really honored to have him um, be our keynote speaker for the fall. And if you didn't get a chance, um, we do have a recording that will be available to our students and employees for about 14 days. Um, I'm going to send that link to Ellie and she can get it out, um, you know, for people who would like to watch it and weren't able to log in last night. We had of about um, 2,500 people logged in last night, which is pretty impressive. Um, I still miss the MIPI theater and doing things in live. Um, past speakers that we've had have just been great energy and great participation by students and different programs. So again, something new that we're trying with these virtual speakers. Stay tuned, we'll have um, some other things um, lined up for the spring. We're talking about a virtual um, Native American day. Um, we've been planning, we don't wanna miss out on having another powwow, but depending on what's happening with COVID in the spring, we may need to think about this virtually. So we're trying to be creative. So keep in tune to, um, to our schedule. Um, I last came to you to talk about the equity and inclusion plan. Um, we had a student forum and just to let you know, we're continuing to sort of work with the different work units and different schools to really get their equity and inclusion plans um, in place and really pushing this um, down throughout um, each, each area of the college, including the regionals. I met with campus managers earlier this week. Um, in addition, we met with President Green, um, Senator Fisher, um, Advisor Rome, um, and Jimmy Sheffin from my office to think about um, a training proposal for Senate. And we submitted something to you all. Um, hope I think so, a smaller group has looked at it. We've put a calendar date, I think December, refresh my memory, early in December um, the 3rd, that will be coming to you to do some training on equity and inclusion. And we'll we'll get some things to you beforehand so that you have some a chance to kind of think and reflect on some of the issues that we'll bring to the table. Um, we're doing, I don't know if you're aware, but we have a newsletter called Equity Connects, and it goes to a pretty wide range of employees, students, and community members. And this month in our two Equity Connects, we're gonna do two takeovers. Um, the Native American Affinity Group and the NASA, the student club, is going to take over one issue of Equity Connects. And obviously, we're doing this virtually. It's a digital um, newsletter. And then the next issue is going to be taken over by the Hmong and Allies, which is an affinity group, along with Asian um, Student Association, that student club. And they'll take it over um, towards the end of the month and thinking about Hmong New Year that's coming up. Well, we'd like to propose, Jimmy Sheffin is really the lead on the Equity Connects, but we'd love to propose a student takeover of our newsletter. Obviously thinking about issues of equity and diversity and inclusion, but having the students take over. So I come to you with a proposal. We can think about it and figure out how do you take over that? Um, Usually we put in some small articles that we write, some connections to resources around the country or um, information, facts, um, all sorts of things. Again, it's just a visual, uh, digital newsletter, but we thought um, a student takeover would really be valuable in getting student perspectives on equity and inclusion. So think about that. We're looking at the December um, 1st issue of our Equity Connect. So maybe we'll have some time to talk about it at our training. Um, trying to think of other things to report out to you. I know that um, President, Vice President um, Tim Casper has been looking at some additional student forums. Um, and so 
I've been working with him and thinking about presentations for um, students. So I know he'll be probably getting on your calendar soon to think about some additional forums like we did for the equity and inclusion plan. Um, that's all I have to report for you tonight, but I'm willing to take some questions or any dialogue that you might have. I, I didn't uh, see who came uh, up first there. I'll let you uh, facilitate I, the question. I believe that would have been Senator Fisher who uh, got everyone to beat everyone with the gun there. So go for it, Senator Fisher. Um, actually, um, I've been in a lot of these conversations. I don't have the ability to see the other hands raised. Um, can I humbly request to just kind of go last in case someone else asks that question that, that I might have or says the thing that I might be interested in saying? All right, that's fine. VP Willis, uh, Senator Willis. Thank you, President Green. <laughs> Good evening, um, Lucia, and thank you so much for your kind words. Um, but I was going to ask you, what is your timeline for um, getting everything implemented? For the equity and inclusion plan? Yes. Is that what you mean? Um, we have a number of timelines. So the academic side of the house, the different schools, um, they have to complete their plans by February of 2021. The work units, the other administrative work units have to complete their plans by the um, end of the month. Yeah, end of November. I'm sorry, I had, a, I, we're in November already. Um, the end of November. So, um, and then the work, of actually starting, you know, getting all these um, actions completed, obviously are already in progress. One of the big action things that we're doing was um, going beyond the awareness. Um, I know we have to increase awareness of implicit bias and microaggressions, and we're doing a lot of those types of trainings. But in addition, we're trying to get um, the different work units to move to action, to look at data, really analyze um, everything from enrollment center to uh, career employment services are a couple of examples of um, units that we've worked with to start analyzing their data and then thinking about where the greatest gaps are and what is it that they're going to do to try to reduce those gaps. Um, so we're in the process of working with each one of those units. Um, and I have a long list, everybody from public safety to my gosh, finances tomorrow. I do a training with financial services tomorrow. So they have to look at data and really think about how to analyze that data and address the gaps that may exist. Cool. cool. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Questions, Senator Willis. Uh, no other questions, and now we go back to Senator Fisher. Um, yeah. So, um, and thank you, Senator Willis, for asking that really um, great question. Um, so, but um, the Racial uh, Inequity Committee actually convened today um, for the first time. Um, so, I'm, I'm hoping that you can stay a little bit later and uh, hear some of that report, as I think it might. Um, uh, relate to this conversation. Um, but basically one of the questions that came up had to do with this training and I feel like it would be better if you um, had wanted to take some time and and give us a better idea of what this training is going to be offered. Um, I think it would sound better coming from you than for me to sort of relay my impression on it during my report. Oh, sure. Um, so we sent you all, we sent uh, President Green and Senator Fisher and Ellie a um, possible proposal, and there's lots of ways of changing it. We've, um, we've created modules, um, a module on microaggressions, a module on implicit bias, a module on privilege, for instance, and all kinds of privilege. Um, we have um, privilege statements that people can uh, select if they're if it applies to them, and it's everything from ability, disability, to socioeconomic, to race, to um, 
oh my gosh, language. There's a variety of different ways that we can look at privilege. Um, so it's a matter of selecting which of these modules you would like. Um, these modules could be separated out and done at different times. Um, again, an attempt to hear what some of the concerns when we met with you all of how to do this and how to continuously bring some of these issues to the table. Um, it, it isn't enough to do one training. You always have to be thinking about these issues in order to really advance on them. So um, we have a basic look, you know, basic training on definitions and, and being on the same page in terms of language, some pre-work before it to reflect on identity characteristics and the importance of identity, um, to then looking at uh, privileged statements that really make us understand how we all carry a certain level of privilege depending on our identities. Um, and depending on sometimes the intersectionality of identities or the we lack privilege because of those intersectionalities. So, um, so again, it's a mixture of different things that the proposal put forth. We, I think what I heard back was to do a 90 minute training and then possible further um, shorter versions, shorter interventions at a later date. And I appreciate the uh, detailed answer um, again, hoping that you can stay a little bit. One of the questions we had in committee today actually specifically had to do with this training. Are you looking for feedback um, as you're putting this together for other groups? Um, who is this training going to be for? Is this the final like is this the like the actual training or is this more of a pilot that you know you're testing on students? That was some of the questions we were um, talking discussing today. Um, and I don't know how we're doing on time, President Green, if, um, if, if it makes more sense with the efficiency of the meeting and if um, uh, VP Nunes can stick around, perhaps we can further this conversation during my report. Yeah, I would say uh, I would say VP Boyd, uh, where we are for time and uh, maybe that would be a best uh, better idea, um, Senator Fisher, um, that way uh, we can hear about the uh, contents of how the first meeting went and um, about the questions that were asked about at this committee meeting. So that I think that that would probably be best. Vice um, President Nunes, are you able to stick around a little bit longer? Um, um, yeah, I'm available. I have a seven o'clock class is my okay. only it, yeah, next much and before I probably should eat something Perfect. before that. But seven o'clock is when my class starts. Perfect. Okay. And we have about three more minutes right here now to reserve. So well, if we well, have three minutes to fill, if we want, uh, or else we can can uh, so move on to the new business aspect. But uh, it's kind of either or. But uh, yeah. Um, any other questions within this three minutes? I guess not. Well, yes, we'll get into it in a little bit here uh, so that those questions can get uh, answered um, about the training. So um, thank you for the statement, though, right off the get go, VP Nunez. I really do appreciate it as well as the Senate does as well. Um, so now we are going to move on to new business um, and I'm going to hand it over to VP Saeed um, for Bill. 005 order for Senate promotional items. VP Said. Hello. So um, I just shared um, the bill number five in the chat. And um, do you mind if I share it or? Okay. Do whatever you have to do, buddy. Okay. <laughs> So here we are. Um, can you zoom out a little bit? Yeah, that's looks good. Okay. Um, so um, bill number five, we are looking to order um, some Senate promotional items, and uh, um, we have uh, we have get an estimated amount, and we are presenting a bill. Me and um, 
VP Boyd is presenting the bill, bill number five. So I, I should just read through it, right? Or, okay. So uh, bill number five, order for Senate promotional items. In the Senate of Madison Area Technical College, November 2020, Vice President Ali Mudan Said and Vice President Jenna Boyd introduced the following legislation drafted on own recognition. Um, formal motion, Senate, should, Senate shall allocate 1507.27 for the purchase of promotional items. Um, section 1, whereas student Senate needs to resupply promotional items. These supply usually last for a few years. Um, promotional items help spread awareness of student Senate among the student body. Um, promotional items are versatile and can be used for a variety of student um, Senate giveaways or activities. Um, and for the conclusion part, um, I hope I'm not missing anything here. Um, so, okay. Being directed by the Student Senate of Marson College, assembled that the Senate shall allocate 1507.27 for the purchase of Senate promotional items. Um, so, if anyone has any questions regarding this bill or um, uh, uh, also, uh, I, I have put down like every details of the items and the the number of items and the color and the estimated price. So, uh, if anyone has any question, I would I would entertain them. Anyone have any questions, uh, Senator Fisher? <laughs> Uh, actually, I have to wait until there is a motion on the bill, uh, so I'll wait. All right. Um, that was a yes, I assume, Senator Willis, do you want to see what the items look like that we'll possibly be ordering? Uh, uh, I'm assuming that's what you're saying yes to. Mm -hmm. All right, and I, I assume that we're pulling that. Are we pulling that up right now? I thought it was up, but if that's not what you're seeing, let me know. It's it is up now. Yep. Okay, thanks. So VP side, do you want to kind of briefly, just quickly explain what we're looking at here? Sure. Um, um, so. We're looking to order stress ball, pens, wa some water bottles, um, um, some hand sanitizers. Um, so, like uh, as you can see, these are all the design which we which we got, um, which we are gonna print, and hopefully, uh, once the bill passed, uh, we're gonna allocate the amount, and we would be able to purchase these items. Um, like I said, um, we we already ran out of like every promotional item we had um so we are we are we are going to have monthly giveaways and this could be even used for uh this items could be even used for senate related activity something like a team building activity so um yeah here they are and and these are all the designs which we got which we got which we um which you got designed from the foreign print so yeah Awesome. Yeah. Do you want so to So any like other explain? questions for VP Said? Um or else uh we can have a motion, uh possibly vote. It's roll call. I mean VP uh Boyd would be taking over on that part. Uh VP Moreno. I oh. make the to vote. To move to All right. And then, um, so do we have a second? I second. All right, seconded by Senator Sabranek. Um, this might seem a little dumb, um, but if we're doing a roll call, 
I don't even know if we had to do our first since uh, original or second. Is that correct, uh, Advisor Rome? Uh, the motion was to vote, so you need to vote on whether to vote. It is needed it is to vote. I broke up static, right? The motion was to vote, so okay. you need to vote All on right. whether to well, then we got first and second. Um, and so all those in favor of voting on such this item, please use the hand raising feature now. I is there a point of order? Um, um, yes, Senator I Fisher. Uh, is, is there not uh, discussion on the vote to vote? There should be. Yeah. There should not be? Should be. OK, all that's right. where I, OK. You go ahead, Senator Fisher. All right, thank you for recognizing me. Um, VP um, Saeed, would you accept a friendly amendment to the bill to uh, remove the qualifier in the second uh, statement that says usually these supplies last for a couple of years, maybe to say something um, more definitive, like, you know, these supplies you know, can, you know, can or something, you know, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I, that qualifier usually is very well with me. Yeah. Um, um, so let me, I guess I should come up with some language for a friendly amendment, if that's what I'm suggesting. Um, perhaps it could say, uh, whereas um, these supplies are intended to last for a couple of years. Sure, I accept that. All right. Um, if this is a discussion, ever can we just discuss, or do I have, should I still facilitate by calling everyone's name? Is that the head shake? Yes. All right, uh, Senator Willis. Or I should say Senator Zebel. I saw Senator Zebel's hand was raised first. Whoa, 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 wait, what? Wait, what? My hand was raised? Oh, let's take yeah. that down. We're good. Never mind. Nope. All right, Senator Willis. It's been my experience from the past working with Senate. The thing is, the reason that qualifier is there is because you don't definitively know exactly how long it's going to last. It's going to be based on demand. So if we're handing them out at events and we run out in a year and a half or a year, we don't know because it's based on enrollment and, and enrollment varies. So that's why that qualifier is there. May I address? Um, yeah, go for it, Senator um, Fisher. Are you, do you think that the uh, friendly amendment holds the same um, purpose just by changing it to say, are intended. I'm just thinking about future senates, you know, when they read it um, to understand like the the purpose, you know, when you talk about the length. Of time. I don't. Well, I believe the way that it was written was is fine because, like I said, we don't know, and it's based on we give it out as a as we need to. We track it in the office. Um, whoever's going, whoever is going in there, we'll track in the office what we have, but. Most of the time when we ordered that quantity, we're just trying to justify in the bill what the um, the rationale behind the amount of money spent. And I apologize because my granddaughter likes to talk when I talk. Um, no but the thing is, yeah, it's kind of hard to definitively qualify it just because we don't know how quickly or how long it, this bunch because of COVID may last three years, depending on how long school is shut down. So that's that's why you just sort of put that it was it's intended to last a couple of years. It may last longer just because of the way things, uh, the way the times are. So well, I that, think that they're, trying to, come, they're just trying to they rationalize the, the amount of money that's being spent and at least let people know it's not something that we bought to, to give away in three months. Because then, yes, if we're spending $500 a month to give away stuff, that would be a little extreme. But if it lasts about two years, then that's understandable. That, that that was the friendly amendment to to say these supplies are intended to last instead of to say these um, these supplies usually last. That's the only that was the only friendly amendment I suggested. Yep, and I think who's sharing? 
I think Ellie uh, already corrected it then. E e yeah, because it, it sounded like um, VP Saeed accepted that friendly amendment. But, you know, I would I would gladly retract if it didn't make sense based on precedent. But if it reads well to you, I would like to um, uh, see it um, get voted on. Uh, OK, uh, VP Moreno, did you still have uh, you had your hand up before VP Boy? Did you still have something to say? Uh, lagging. All right. Um, well, uh, did you still have something to say or then if it's lagging or can VP Boyd speak? Uh, Boyd? Sure. So the only reason I prefer the original grammar structure is if we're talking about future Senate applications of this, you could also read it as these are intended to last for a couple of years. So then shorten, you would potentially shorten how much is given out because if it's saying, well, this this will have to hold over if that's what the intent is, or as opposed to usually would say, historically, typically, we would anticipate it to last a couple of years versus the intent is for it to last a couple of years. And that's only the nuance to the grammar. It's not super important to me, but if we're looking at a historical application of referencing this in the future, I think that um, minute difference matters. So that's the only point I have. All right. Uh, any response to that, Senator Fisher, or are we all good with the correction then, or the non-correction? I support what Jenna just said. Okay. All right, well, I'll make it easy for everyone. I will retract my friendly amendment, um, even though it had been accepted either way. Um, I, I understand the positions uh, from the um, other senators and, and VPs. Um, so um, just for the efficiency of time, I, I think that it will be interpreted um, in, in a meaningful way in future Senates. So I will just retract the friendly amendment. OK. OK, well, uh, then. OK, uh, if you got to leave VP Saeed, then um, uh, we'll see you later and good luck, uh, VP Boyd. Um, we just have to vote. We have to make the vote now uh, to vote on the thing. Um, any other discussion that we would like to discuss? Are we going to make that vote? The only comment I have, I don't know if we'll want to motion to extend before. We're down to one minute about right now. So we'll just need the time for the vote. So if we want to extend it, I don't know, two or three minutes. Um, can we enter the motion to extend time to do the vote? Do we have a motion to extend time? See something in the chat. Can you? Oh well, then it's just do VP boy. And, uh, you make the motion, so uh, you see a couple of minutes or three minutes. I don't know which one is. Senator Fisher. Second. And seconded by Senator Fisher. All those in favor? Favor hand raising feature now, please. All right, and you can put them down. All those opposed, put them up. Put them down. Any abstentions? All right, down. And so extra three minutes, I believe it was, added to this to make the vote. And um, so now we're making the vote now, correct? <laughs> so, um, all those in favor of voting on Bill 005, um, the order for more promotional items, please uh, use the hand raising feature now. All right, and you can put them down. And all those opposed, Eric, we still need your hand down. You don't like my hand or what? Uh, all those opposed, please uh, use the hand raising feature now. And down. And any abstentions? Raise them up now. And down. And that motion has passed. So. 
you may continue on now, VP Boyd, with your part of the bill. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to start right on the list. So if somebody's not here, if somebody wants to just chime in and let me know audibly, otherwise I'm going to go through the list. Um, so it starts with me, VP Boyd. I have an I vote. VP Moreno. I. Uh, we do not have Rubio, correct? And Saeed stepped out as well. So I did step out at this point, yes. Okay. Senator Fisher? Abstain. Senator Eugenin? If you cannot, we would prefer you speak, um, but if you cannot speak, some method of saying a, nay, or abstaining is what we like. All right, so a, okay, he's for. Senator Hodge. All right, he's not here. Uh, do we have Senator Jones Yes, cool. Who you say? He's not here. He's not here. Okay. Senator Rungy. Aye. Senator Zabranek. Aye. Senator Willis. Aye. Senator Weiner. I see Senator Weiner. Well, this is go to the next. All know? right, well, go to the next one. Uh, Senator Ziegel. Aye. Senator Ziegler. Aye. Okay. What's the tally? We have eight in favor. All right, and, and so it passes. Yay. Yes, passes. Yay. All right. Uh, well, congratulations, everyone. Um, VP side would be very happy to hear that, and we can put that order in as soon as possible. So. Um, now we can continue on down our list and officer and committee reports, uh, exec executive council report, uh, that would be me. Um, we spoke mostly about appointments for, uh, uh the racial inequity committee and for public relations committee, I believe, and, um, about time slots for, uh, for future executive council meetings um really the prime things that we talked about um so that's my report um unless if we have unless if somebody was given vp rubio's admin and finance report um then we will continue to move it down with legislative and rules committee with vp boyd i do not have a report at this time all right and then Team Development Committee with VP Moreno. Okay, hello everyone. Um, so what I have for this week is that I, um, so first the Kahoot we uh, event trivia night will not be this week. We're gonna organize that better and have that ready for next week. So we'll send out the information either later today or Monday to have that um, event going on. And prizes are selected, and I'll send those as a surprise later in the event just to keep the suspense. Um, also, I sent out, not that long ago, um, a presentation with the information, well, a little information about the student, student Senate team's activities. Um, that presentation is going to be updated. It's going to be constantly worked on um, with the challenges. It has all our pictures, and it has the teams that are currently winning. 
or that have more prices at the moment, which are Fighting Mongoose, Tim Incognito, and Green Day, all with 90 points. So those are the teams leading. Um, also, don't forget student presentations. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, give a highlight to Senator Eugenin for doing his presentation. He just let me know. Um, also, there are a lot of cool events going on in the college. I'll send also those with the dates, times, and locations that I might, if I'm able to. Um, and yes, that is that is what I have. So I'll so be ready to check your emails, and if anybody has any questions regarding anything, um, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Any qu quick questions before I move on? Oh. Sorry, I did have yeah. one last comment. Um, so uh, something that I didn't add in the presentation that I sent, but I'll add on the next one, is that um, the final way of winning points or losing points is that either you win 15 points or you lose 15 points. That's like the number 15, but that's all I had to say. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And if no other questions, then moving on. Can't do VP say either. He had no... Uh, Report for that. So, moving now, special reports, Advisor Rome. He would have mentioned the um, point accruals. Um, we had some issues with the math, but hopefully, we will get new numbers out to everybody soon based on office hours and meeting attendance. Um, it should go down for people. Um, we were over counting for some office hours um, that. That you should have only been able to lose half a point instead of a point per week so um, that should clear some things up and um, the only other thing is just to share a few more details about the training um, which i know lucia might talk about more of the content but from um, a logistical standpoint um, that will be taking place of the general assembly meeting on december 3rd it will still be required attendance but we um, decided the executive council decided it was um, worthwhile to um, have that training so that everyone could participate. Um, and the best way to do that is make it during our regularly scheduled time. Um, so we'll be dedicating the whole meeting um, to that training. So it won't be an extra thing, um, but really put in our own structure. So we'll start um, shortly after 4.30 on that Thursday. And that is all I have to report. Awesome. Thank you, Advisor Rome. Uh, Student Activities Board, that's me again. There is no report. Um, housing Accessibility Update uh, with Senator Jones. Well, there is no report. We all got his email. Um, so um, moving down a Digital Equity Update, uh, Senator Zebel. Digital equity, yes, not much. Our, our, our rental program is doing good. Um, I do have a uh, list of accomplishments and things that we have done over the past, um, I want to say, three months that we've been here. So um, I can get that sent out to you too, uh, UN Shay, Shai, sorry <laughs> about that. Um, other than that, no, there's no nothing support. We're moving on smoothly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now Racial and Equity Committee with Senator Fisher. All right, and again, a uh, big thank you to Madison College leadership for you know sticking with us in these meetings. Um, uh, so to use this time efficiently, yes, the Racial and Equity Committee met for the first time um, today. We did make quorum. Um, congratulations to um, Senator Jenin uh, Francisco was appointed as well um, as our senator's seat. And so the big announcement that I want to make sure to make um, is that we did meet today and decide to open the second round for students um, um, to apply. So we'll be applying the same method as before with the student-wide email and filling another student seat, which would bring our uh, membership to five total and so basically fulfilling what I was trying to do in core two. Um, it's a little bit, I would say, um, amplified from my initial intention, um, but we're moving fast, and so that's good because I felt like we lost a week, and now we're able to sort of make up for that uh, lost week. 
by opening the student round. So this is this will mark the uh, initial public announcement for that. It'll look the same. Uh, students who applied before um, may also be considered. We're discussing how the considerations for the members uh, will be in the second cycle. Um, and so I just want to thank um, um, Senator Haji and um, Senator Jenin, uh, uh student Senate seats, and then of course our, our student uh, representative um, as well um, for being as flexible as they are. So um, in our discussion today, we talked about a number of things, including procedure and um, you know, we'll be um, making some other announcements with uh, regards to uh, when we convene. We're going to convene next Thursday um, just before GA as well. Looks like Thursday's our day. Vice President Nunez, thank you uh, again. So we wanted to know specifically this training that uh, we're all going to be in um, during our general assembly. Is there any kind of feedback or anything related to that prior to this um, that we could be assisting with, or um, what kind of um, what kind of uh, engagement um, do you see with um, this initiatives committee um, with, in a more abstract level? If you want to go there, sure. Um I'm a strong believer that um, people need to think about issues before they actually get engaged into them. So one of the things that we've done with other groups is to provide some, we don't want to call it homework because that always scares people away, but some pre-work. And that includes some reflections, some questions, um, some videos, uh, either TED Talks or other types of videos to help people sort of get into and thinking about the issues of diversity, inclusion, and equity. Um, we've suggested some people take the implicit association test. I don't know if any of you have ever taken that. So there's a variety of things. I will probably put together that handout with Jimmy Sheffin, whom you all met, and asking for some feedback from you all. I know you had a list of some great documentaries and other kinds of films that um, were valuable in thinking about some of these issues. So we'll put together that pre-work just before, send it out to the participants beforehand. Um, again, it's not meant to be homework. It's meant to be some reflection and thinking about issues in preparation for our time together. We tend to customize um, trainings. We don't kind of pull things out of a hat and do it over and over again. We've never, um, I've done some trainings with student groups and students involved. Um, Kat Larson, who was a senator for many years, some time ago, I can't even remember when, she and I uh, co-facilitated a training for students at Net Friday. Um, we co-facilitated a, a training for uh, women lead, which um, is a student club. Um, so we've done a variety of things depending on the audience. It can't be cookie cutter. It really can't. Um, I'd love co-facilitation. Um, if any any of the senators want to co-facilitate in any way, some of the sections or modules that we decide should be part of this training, I'd love it. I think. I think that kind of co-facilitation really works well. Um, I'm 60 years old. You know, my experience and my life experience is very different than many of yours. So having that together really works well. Um, so I welcome that kind of um, collaboration. Um, I think, did I address those two questions? No, and I there mean, were really, you know, some I'd just like to hear some of your responses to this because you know this is kind of a historic um, committee in the way that it's being formed. We have a member who's not a part of student senate, and there will be more members who are not part of student senate. So I think we just sort of have a unique posture in this. And perhaps my my real question should be, um, you know, uh, don't want to assume uh, your busy schedule or uh, Jimmy uh, Sheffin's busy schedule, but certainly um, if you're available. Um, to uh, come to one of our, um, our our committee um and maybe we can kind of you know look at other ways to to help um, if not just for this training then you know for other things as well looking uh, toward the future 
it looks like we're meeting on Thursday. So um, I hope that we can extend that invitation out that way. But really, I just wanted to kind of uh, learn a little bit more about that. That was the main question um, in, in, in our discussion today was, you know, what is this training? Who's it's going to be offered to and that sort of thing. But at large, we want to know, you know, kind of what kind of things um, that we can do to help. Um, and I'm glad that you mentioned students so many times because we don't have Madison College without students. Absolutely. No, totally agree. Um, please do send me an invite. I think you said next Thursday if that I um, it looks like I'm open. So if you meet just before General Assembly, um, please do send me an invite. However, if you do a Teams meeting or whatever, and I'll put it on my calendar. Will do. It'll be next Thursday at three. Um, it's when we're scheduled. Okay. okay. All right. That concludes my my time. I yield back. All right. Thank you, Senator Fisher. Um, textbook affordability committee is currently vacant. Um, now moving on to regional and metro campus reports. Reedsburg is vacant. Watertown is vacant. Portage, Senator Rungi, do you have a report for us? Yes, but not much. Can y'all hear me? Yep. Um, we have nothing new going on. I just wanted to again put out that reminder of our blood drive. If uh, any of you live up in the northern region or are going through on December 1st, we have a much needed blood drive that we are partnering with. Um, it's going to be our United Methodist Church and it's the same information I have been giving. I just want to put that reminder out there. All right. Thank you, Senator Rungi. And now moving down to Fort Atkinson uh, is vacant as well. And then Goodman South is vacant. Northern uh, Regional Engagement Committee, Senator Rungi, a report for that one. Yes, we haven't met um, since our last Senate meeting. We are on a we have moved to a every other week schedule. So our next schedule meeting will be next week, Wednesday, November 11th. It's from noon to one. If anyone's interested, give me a heads up and we can definitely get you in on that. Um, and I should have a report next Senate meeting on how things went down next week. Awesome. Thank you. And now professional development. Uh, wait, I was just college assembly. Uh, no report from me. Uh, Academic Council, Senator Fisher. Ah, it always comes up so quick. I have to move this around because I'm I'm still reframing. So okay, uh, I'm not going to get ahead of um, the college assembly announcement. There's some chatter going on on the other end, but I don't know how much of that is supposed to be made. Um, you know, um, uh, super public right now. It's not secret. I just I don't want to get ahead of our meeting. We do have a meeting um, next Thursday, um, so um, which is just before GA, and so I'll be able to make more uh, tailored announcements. Um, but yes, with regards to uh, Vice President Nunes, uh, the OEI policy. That's one of the things that I know is on our agenda to discuss that implementation uh, policy that. Um, um, Vice President Nunes was just discussing because that will be something that the Academic Council looks at, which is due uh, February of next year, according to Vice President Nunes. So with that, um, I'll keep the report short. Uh, we're going to meet next week and I will give you some more details about other things. Awesome. Thank you, Senator Fisher. And now uh, Diversity and Community Relations Council, VP Boyd. Yep, yep, we met yesterday. We had a combined meeting uh, with IEC, and I won't go into extensive detail because I'm sure um, Sheila will cover some of that when we go into the IEC report. Uh, but essentially, they gave a presentation on the um, equity and research um, and assessment, and uh, that's what the vast majority of the conversation was surrounding was essentially the work that IEC has been doing um, in creating these tools. So that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, VP Boyd. And now Facilities Planning and Investment Council, uh, Senator Willis. No report. 
All right, and now moving down, Finance Council, Senator Ziegler. Yes, um, our uh, subcommittee on unmet student program needs met Tuesday, and we were analyzing a questionnaire that we had sent out to the vice presidents, yeah, deans, yeah. and program directors. And um, we're planning on setting up either uh, focus groups or uh, a complete survey through SurveyMonkey and um, to garner further information. But we'll be presenting that to the full finance committee when they convene in the morning. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you, Senator Ziegler. Uh, Information Technology Council, Senator Zivel. Oh, yeah. So we were finishing up our policy. Um, they also have a meeting um, with FPIC, I believe, next week, which should go over smoothly. Other than that, um, no other thing. All right. Uh, Institutional Effectiveness Council, Senator Rugney. I do have a little more detail um, on that um, meeting that Vice President Boyd alluded to. So um, we had this Institutional Effectiveness DCRC Collaborative Subcommittee meeting. We reviewed um, all the information on their equity and research project um, and um, some of the things that we talked about. Uh, DCRC had developed some, had done some work to develop some guiding questions, best practices to apply to our data assessments. Um, we took a look at this um, West Coast equity lens policy as a, a potential tool to work um, work up for use here in Madison. Um, it looked like a, a good place, a good starting place. We discussed the role of the college assembly and councils who should ultimately own this and um, whether that should be pieced out to different areas of the college or if it should be owned um, and housed somewhere so that accountability sort of continues with it. And Due to our time exceeding um, with just this kind of discussion, we never got around to IEC's regular schedule agenda. We'll be picking that up again in two weeks when we meet on Wednesday, November 18th at 2 o'clock. I do have more details in my written report um, if anybody's interested in, in, in finding out more about that. Any questions? Any questions for Senator Rungi? If none. Uh, I, I'll ask one quick question, um, which had to do with the equity analysis. Um, is that is that something that I could just see a copy of? Um, we do equity analysis as well at the Dane County EOC, and I'm just I'm curious to see what other equity analysis uh, look like um, coming from other places. Well, this is this is a work in progress. What is hap exactly. what ha what has happened is, um, as I mentioned, some guiding questions or best practices have sort of um, been formulated. Right now, we're looking at how do we make a policy out of this, or or a tool of some sort that we can recommend that the college use um, across across many um, areas. So um, it's very it's it's very much needed, and it's very interesting um, uh, work that's happening. Um, the DCRC um, and IEC, it's kind of up in the air right now. Who, or if both of us are going to sort of keep working on this? But I would, I would suggest if you do want some more details, or if you want to um, have some input on this, that um, you get in in you know, one of those um, committees and and be a part of it because I think it's um it definitely will go hand in glove with the work that you're doing. Well, I, I appreciate that. You know, a lot of it was I was trying to think of um, ways to in, engage this brand new initiative um, committee work. Um, so I'll just I'll leave it open ended up to to um, actually Bob your discretion and VP Boyd's discretion as far as like, you know, what kind of uh, 
sharing of material, you know, just for the educational purpose, not to weigh in, but just, you know, hey, this is an example of how some folks do it. I had planned on um, importing some things from from Dane County EOC as well. A lot of that stuff is public record at this point too, because uh, it's you know it's been complete, it's been out there. Just to show the the committee, hey, this is an example of what you know um, some bodies are doing in order to you know piece together the equity puzzle. Yeah, definitely. Will your your committee and this committee. Um, there's going to be some overlap, so I'm I'm hoping there's some loop in that happens at some point. Any other questions? I guess that concludes my report. Awesome. Uh, all right, Professional Development Council, Senator Willis. My mute. Hi, again. we just met on Monday. Um, and basically what we're still working on is trying to find out ways to incorporate um, racial equity into um, the issue statements. So that's what we're discussing currently. And I'll give you an update after our next meeting. Awesome. Thank you very much, Senator Willis. Uh, Student Affairs Council, VP Moreno. Oh. I'm sorry, Sarah Fisher, you got a question? Of course, it's really just an open invitation as well, uh, Senator Willis. We'd love to have you, um, you know, scheduled out, um, you know, sometime hopefully before the end of the semester. I know there's only a few more weeks left, but certainly we'd like to, you know, figure out ways to be of service um, in putting together the equity puzzle. Granted, we're looking at, you know, racial specifically, but, um, you know, perhaps there's some, some mutual benefit and just meeting for a little bit. Thank you. All right, so Student Affairs Council, VP Moreno. OK, so we meet next week. Okie dokie. And no old business items. Already dealt with the new business items. No non-business slash housekeeping items. The announcements of the day, get your office hours done, your virtual office hours done, and log your office hours once you've gotten them done. Check Teams and check your school email. Keep working on that stu student leadership training Blackboard course whenever that's due. Um, and um, then Advisor Rome is going to take it away from there. Um, something I could have mentioned during my report, but announcement. Um, the executive team decided that office hours and meetings will not be required the week of Thanksgiving. So because we don't have a general assembly meeting, um, you don't need to do the office hours. If you had committee meetings, feel free to cancel those for that week. Um, take it easy. Exactly. Um, all right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting unless there are any other further questions or statements. All right, VP Moreno, is that a motion to adjourn? Yes. All right, motion's been made. Do I have a second? Uh, I'm going to give it to Ziegler. Uh, so seconded by Ziegler. Uh, all those in favor? Um, Use the hand raising feature now. And you can put them down. And all those opposed, put them up. And down. And any abstentions, put them up. And down, and we're adjourned at 5.37 p.m. So yippee, yay, and you guys have